Right, so time to defend this eternity. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? Etheria was once a land of living legends. Long ago, brave warriors across the realm stood together against an immortal evil known as the Old Ones. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Your parents are the legendary heroes of the MacGuffin, ancient evil packed away somewhere, you accidentally release some of it, now we have to stop that evil from releasing the rest of it. Yeah, so you probably gather at this point, these stories mostly there to get you from point A to point B. Now there ain't nothing wrong with a simple story and I absolutely love the voiceover, it is also very well animated and stuff like that, but let's move on to the game. When you start the game for the first time, you're put in the tavern that acts like a hub with a random character. You can then go to your forge and make a new character, pick one of the pre-made ones, or just start playing the game. There isn't really a tutorial to speak of, but the game is pretty straightforward. Play house and defend the crystals. Finding out the best way to do so is up to you, and of course the main meat of the game. And the character you pick define how you play. The squire slash counters have powerful towers to shoot things in the face, and pierces enemies. The monk puts up auras to debuff enemies and has abilities to buff himself and others. Elements are also important to the game, for example the apprentice have two towers, fireball and lightning towers, and all the monk's auras are based on elements as well. Enemies have a chance to be spawned with an element, making them immune to this. So you have to plan around this, placing down defenses that take away these elemental resistances. Like the apprentice's shield, the monk's strength draining aura and the hunter's darkness trap. This puts a lot of thought into the way you put up your defenses, since now you're counting your defense units, which are the points that govern how many towers you can place, trying to cover as much area, but also other defenses as possible. This would be a good place to talk about the maps slash levels. They are all nice and varied, starting with the deeper well, which is basically a basement where not much is going on, going through a giant throne room, ending on the rainy rooftop of a giant castle fighting the mighty ancient dragon. The maps are laid out nicely and are never too hard to set up for once you've gotten a hold of the game's mechanics. And you can see what spawns where and how many. But still, it takes some time to perfect and the tweaking and tinkering with your setups is what the game is all about, so it's nice to see that the maps aren't too straightforward. Now the enemies themselves aren't too varied, but they also have a purpose. The goblins are your soft blow grunts, the archers are ranged units you have to take out before they can get in range to shoot your towers. Orcs are medium tier brutes and the first thing that can take a punch. Warriors go straight for players and towers and are very dangerous. Kobolds are suicide bombers that rush your defenses. Vibrants are flyers that skip right over your towers if you are not careful. Mages heal units and raise skeletons. The spiders are... well, you know... I don't know if there's still sharks and jinns in the game, but I'm sure they're on their respective maps and I just haven't seen them yet. So when you've slain a few hundred enemies, it's time to look for upgrades, and this is one of my favorite things about the game. When you run over all the coins and mana dropped on the ground and you hear all the bling 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 bling, one of the best changes to eternity is the option to tell the game what to look for in items so you can better see what's an upgrade and not. More on the changes to eternity later. You use the mana for tower upgrades and hero abilities during combat, and the coins to upgrade your gear in the tavern. This is of course the place where most people jump ship because they find it a chore to compare gear all the time, and that's understandable. If that's the reason you don't play Diablo or Sacred or something like that, it's probably gonna be the reason you don't pick up this game. The bosses aren't too advanced, but they do shake things up nicely and have a few gimmicks to them. Not much more than find a weakness and exploit it, disable it, then when it's in range you punch it a lot in the face. But it still is a rush to have to manage all your defenses while a big dragon is trying to eat you. So that's the cut and dry part of Dungeon Defenders Eternity. It's a fun little game about resource management and loot harvesting. It has a ton of different maps, a handful of game modes, and character, let's be honest here, stat min-maxing. There's content for absolutely hours on end, lots of people to play with and strategies to discover. But this is where I put down my trilby and get a lot more personal. 
the time has come for the comparison part of this review. Now for the changes between Eternity and Classic, let's start with the positives. I love that the towers have more statistics displayed when you're setting them up now. I'd like to see this expanded a bit though, so maybe you can walk up to a tower that has already been built and see the same detailed stats. Another thing I love so much it almost killed me is that you can now tell the game what stats you're looking for in loot. And this is another thing I just want more and more of, more choice for what exactly you're looking for. Since the comparison system isn't too advanced and it doesn't have that many choices to it, the game can still be wonky on what to recommend for you, since it doesn't know what's important to you specifically. Do you want more hero cast speed or are you looking for more movement speed and damage? You can now move around while you're placing a tower, and if you get into contact with small ledges or one of your defenses, you'll automatically jump onto them. You can also look around while you're upgrading and repairing. This makes it a lot easier to see if there's anything else in the area that needs help. You can have an on-screen minimap, and the bloom has been dialed back a fair bit, which is so nice for my eyes. I had post-processing disabled and all the textures washed out. I just couldn't stand looking at the colors in Classic anymore. The new potion and trinket system seems very interesting. The trinkets all have their own costs and are tiered just like gear, so they don't seem too overpowered. And they have nice effects like cursing the enemy, making them take more damage, or flash healing your turrets. And that are some of the things that have been added to the game that makes it fresh and interesting. So, naturally now it's time to look at what makes it moldy and smelly. And the bad is bad. Some of this stuff probably looked really good on paper, but it has been executed with the same finesse I execute my jokes. That is to say, very poorly. Skins are now completely redundant, and I don't even see why this should be in a game anymore. You give your character a skin that makes him look like a mummy or a ninja or something, and then when you go into the game, you pick up armor and start putting that on, and before you know it, the unique look and feel of that skin is just completely gone. Survival is a shadow of its former self. You have to have all your towers set up before you begin the game, since you can't change your character during. And this kind of forces you to have your builder out the entire time, and with the missing split screen, it's just so much harder to power level a character. I do like that it's just an hour you have to survive now, instead of 25 to 30 waves. It just makes it easier to plan for. You could go like, oh, I have an hour before bedtime, I guess I'll do some survival. You just get pooped into this hub tavern, where everybody's standing around away from keyboard, staring at the forge of the tavern keeper, making it feel like MMO number one gazillionth. It takes away this awesome feeling of your own tavern and your trophies strewn about, proving how much effort you put into the game, and I've already been around how I like that. I really miss the peace and quiet, the tavern now is so noisy and everybody's setting up defenses trying out their DPS and stuff like that. And at some point there's probably gonna be too many people in there to do it reliably. And they removed the training dummies from the deeper well so you can't even hide in there and test out DPS and peace and quiet. The character models were clearly never meant to emote very much, but they put emotes in the store for one dollar a pop and that just baffles me. Now it no longer feels like you're playing a game that you paid for, it feels like you're renting a room at Trendy, and they can at any point disable simple game features to save bandwidth. I have to ask why? It's a SimCity problem all over again, you lob everyone onto these servers when you launch the game, and then the servers can't handle it, and you have to ask all kinds of features like the goddamn single player function and nightmare difficulty. The biggest problem here is that I played almost exclusively on the official service before, and it worked perfectly fine. And for some arbitrary reason, you get kicked back to the tavern after two minutes when the game is done. That means you only have two minutes to check for loot, and this is a big problem, especially on survival. And you might say, oh, you just have to pick all of it up and check it in the tavern. And even if we accept that as a solution, you have to pick up a whole bunch of crap, and on the bigger maps it's probably gonna be impossible to get around to all of it. And then you have to sit there in a noisy tavern, checking all the crap that you know is gonna be there, just to find the things that might be an upgrade. The towers can still be an absolute pain to put down, and on one map I couldn't even zoom out to get a better overview. 
if there's one thing that should have been changed, it's this one. You're trying to put down a tower to cover the most possible area and then, oh, hello, there's a girder or a fucking branch in the way. Wait, it's 2014, isn't it? Well, that means I better put in a half ass crafting system. Like it's gonna add anything that now you can craft things. The blueprints don't even look like they're gonna be better than the crap you can just pick off the floor. What really made me give up hope that they're gonna pull out of this nosedive is the whole promise of microtransactions. A thing I found absolutely ridiculous is that you start with one of each skin and no way of buying any more skins for real life or in-game cash, but you can accidentally sell one of your skins for one coin and then you can get to go to the tavern keeper and buy that back, the skin back for two real life dollars. And I... You know what? You know what? Fuck, fuck, fuck the whole unbiased thing for a minute. You, you did listen to that, right? You sell it for one in-game coin. And then you get to buy it back for two real life dollars. I am, I am about to just strangle my cat or something. Fuck me sideways. <sighs> Alright, moving on. I know I wasn't a victim of the hacking. And I know the new system is built up to combat this apparently rampant problem. But this is, as usual, not the way to go about it. Ripping out the single player, or at least the ability to play on your own accord and have the time to check your loot, kicking people from their games and taking away the tavern maps and difficulties, and the promise of microtransactions are just not leaving me with very high hopes. Alright, so I've ignored this up until now, but I think it needs mentioning. Dundee Defenders Classic was developed and released by Trendy Entertainment, with the help from Rework Publishing. Eternity is published by Trendy and made by NomNom Games. Either a novice studio under Trendy or a Shadow Op, because I can find no track record for these guys. And before anyone take them into defense and say, hey, then maybe they're still learning and stuff, and we shouldn't blame Trendy too much if the interns did the upgrade. But I think that Trendy should have been extra careful then, held their hand over them and make sure that their product is up to standard and then have done some Q&A on it. So that's Dungeon Defenders Eternity. There are of course a whole bunch of good things and a whole bunch of bad things that I haven't covered or just plump forgot about. So the question is now, is the game worth your money? And I gotta say no, in no way. Trendy has to patch this a lot, they have to change core things about the game, and they have to prove to us that there are no more BS microtransactions. But if they manage to fix the game, this is a definite buy for any strategy and hacking slash fan. And with that, I'll say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.